are if you don't know what r12 biological station is and you tuning in because you saw somebody else post this on a different facebook page Archbold is located in Florida, in South Central Florida, about an hour, about two hours from Disney World, and about two hours from both of the coasts. We're on a sandy spot. Uh, Florida scrub is what a lot of the habitat is here, which is this white sand, big old um, ridge in the middle of the state. And we also have ponds and a lake and a cattle ranch and uh, oak forests and all kinds of cool habitats here. I'm going to click on this little heart right here. We've been doing this for 30 years. This is actually the 30th anniversary of our summer science camps. Now, of course, it's a little different this year with all the virtual and last year was virtual too. Uh, but we're pretty proud of this because we've been having these kids come forever and we have summer campers now whose parents came here as campers in the early 1990s. So we, um, we just love it. And I, as an educator, it's really wonderful. I've been here eight years to watch kids grow up. So I've, I've watched kids, some of them start from when they were seven, grow up or, some that were teenagers when I first got here are now working at Archbold as scientists now. So, um, yeah, 30 years, pretty, pretty amazing. And when I took over, in some ways, there wasn't much I had to do. This was such a good program. I've added my little spin on it, but I really stick to a lot of the traditions that we've been doing here for, for decades. The main difference here, well, one is this is a mostly virtual camp, but the other difference is it's four weeks long. There are two sessions to choose from. There's a June session and a July session. And it's not like um, the way we did it last summer, which was the camps were just a week long. Now there's four weeks of activities and Li um, live Zoom events for the students to pick from, for the campers to pick from. The, the campers are not expected to go to every event, to do every activity, but they have four weeks and they know what the schedule is every day if they want to tune in that day. But there's no expectation that they'll do everything. So this camp can be done in addition to other summer things. Maybe you're going on vacation this summer, or there's another camp that your that your child is participating in during part of June or part of July, you could do this on top of that camp, and it would still work. Some of the th some of the parts, a lot of it is live with certain times, other parts you can do right at home. And ages seven to 12. One thing, th another thing that's a little bit different this year is that I'm not being real strict about these age limitations. Normally at camp, you have to sign up for the seven to nine slot or weeks and the 10 to 12 uh, year old weeks. And it's difficult sometimes for families because they'll have a, a nine and a 10 year old um, or maybe good friends or cousins have, have, you know, are on different sides of that age range. Um, and they can't go to camp together. Well, with this one, some of the activities will say this is for seven to nine or this is 10 to 12, but I'm not enforcing any of that. It's just a suggestion. It's totally fine if you if you um, want to put your kids that are different ages together. And our we have uh, we have a weekly schedule. I said this is four weeks long, but I tried to keep it simple by having a schedule that that repeats. So you know that every Monday is the same time to log in. Every Tuesday is the same time to log in, even though there'll be new activities and new things to do each of those weeks. So it's a simple schedule, but it is new activities, new things every week for those four weeks. So it's a lot of content that we're that we're piling in here, a lot of content. Um, I, I, I do want to go over the pricing a little bit here. See, it's $35 per camper. Um, and I think that I think that that's pretty good. It gets you a lot. It gets you a lot of content and, and exclusive events that other 
like virtual field trips and things that normally during the other parts of the year we might do that for the public but then but this is going to be just for that community of campers um, and like every other year we have sponsorships available so it's 35 dollars per camper but we have donations um, a lot of our staff give donations a lot of people from all over the country give donations to our camp so that a family with financial hardships um, doesn't have to say, oh, we can't afford to do camp this year. We want we want all the kids to be able to come. And in the eight years that I've been here, I've never had to turn down uh, a, a child from our camp um, who was eligible for a sponsorship. To be eligible, you email me, email the education department um, with proof that you that your family is on um, government benefits. And that's all I need. And then your kid gets it all for free. <laughs> so uh, that is all because of donations. It's really wonderful. We have some, on a typical year, we have about 25% of our campers are actually coming here um, on sponsorships. And to register, you go to the Archbold website. There's a summer club. So we're calling it a club because it's four weeks. It's the summer club page. And you just click the register here once you're on the summer club page. And it has the dates on there and um, some of the anticipated uh, questions. Well, let's go through some of these activities. I'll, I'll take you through this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday schedule. Right now we're keeping Fridays, uh, Fridays open. And feel free to put those questions in the chat or comments. So Mondays we start, we start each camp week with a check-in in the morning. So the 9 a.m. for the younger kids, 11 for the older for the older kids. And this is where we will talk about the at home activities we've got for kids like, hey, did you do that scavenger hunt that we that we've got set up for you? Um, did you try this online activity we put together where you had to do, um, you know, learn about a certain habitat or uh, whatever it is, we'll have a variety of different activities and chat with the kids. And what, what I found from last summer's virtual camp it was that this is what a lot of the campers liked the most. They just like being able to get on and, and chat about science and nature. And, and this is the time where we'll see, we'll say things like, um, we'll each get to talk about what, what nature we saw this week. Did anybody go for a hike in the woods? Anybody see a snake? Anybody see cool birds, spiders? And that, that's a really nice way to start each of our camp weeks. In the afternoons, we have mini movie sessions. These are not uh, not full films, but we'll be watching short. Could be three minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Probably won't do any quite that long. Um, educational films about science and nature, and then also have conversations about them. Archbold, we have a lot of our own films that we've produced ourselves, so we'll be showing some of those, um, as well as from, from, other, from other places too. And the fun part about this is that we'll discuss them. So it's not just that we'll show you a video about, say, the, the life in a pond, the biodiversity in a pond, or uh, about, about how old gopher tortoises live. Afterwards, we'll chat about it. So, that, so I'm really looking forward to those conversations. Tuesdays, habitat tours and science demonstrations. These will be, these will be really fun. The habitat tours, this is very similar to what um, I've been doing every Tuesday morning. If you've paid attention to the Archbold Facebook page, you'll see every Tuesday morning I've been live streaming uh, with a, a cell phone and a selfie stick out in different habitats. And, that, and I have a really cool macro lens where I can look up um, like a magnifying lens at flowers and bugs and all kinds of cool stuff outside. So I'll be uh, at different uh, types of habitats throughout the four weeks. In the afternoons, this the science demonstrations will be. Um, you know, we have we have a snake that will get out. We'll get out some animal skulls. Uh, we have a drone demonstration scheduled, 
and more. <laughs> and the and more means I'm still figuring some of it out, but we'll definitely at least do these. And I'm trying to figure out what other kind of fun science demonstrations we might we might put into the camp too. If you have ideas, put them in the chat. Now is the time. This last month or so, we got five weeks before our first session starts. And uh, right now is when this is what I'm doing for the next five weeks, putting it all together. And and I should also give credit to the education intern, Margaret, as well. So that's Tuesdays. Wednesdays. Wednesday mornings we have as the in-person event. Now, our virtual camp uh, will have will have students from around the country participating. But if you are one of the lucky ones that live in Highlands County around here, we wanted to have some in-person moment because it's such a special part of, of our summer camps. Um, and we realized that we could not put on a full regular in-person summer camp this year because we had um, we went through it and looked at all the restrictions we would have put on it, and it would have just been so different that it would not have been fun. Um, but I, right now I have permission to take the campers out for a, a nature exploration event to a seasonal pond. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. And that'll be really fun. We want everybody to have a chance to do that. Uh, we'll keep the numbers small, but if we need to add more, we'll add, we'll book more. In the in the afternoons, we have book club. The book for the seven to nine year olds, I haven't decided on yet. I'd love suggestions. I'm, I've got a couple different ones I've been looking at, um, and still trying to still trying to decide. The after the the older kids for the for three p.m. You might know this one, Carl Hyacin's Hoot. There's a movie made on it too. It's about um, middle school students helping to protect um, burrowing owls. And we actually do have burrowing owls on our property here. It's a really nice story. And every week we'll, we'll get on and talk about it. So it's not just like read the book and have one conversation. We'll have conversations throughout the four weeks. And um, I, think, I think it'll be a lot of fun for, for those kids who, who love nature and reading and want to combine them together and want to talk about the characters and, and what's happening in the book. I'm in a, I'm in a book, a couple different book clubs I've been in. Um, I love book clubs and I've, I've never done one with kids. I think it's going to be really fun. All right. Uh, before I go to Thursday, let's go back to the seasonal pond here. Um, so this is the one thing that we know we're going to do live but we might end up being able to add some other live components to this too. There won't be any extra charge. That $35 or the sponsorship that gets you all of this content also um, gets that your, your camper into the seasonal pond investigation. This will be about a half a day, probably two, two and a half hours um, of, and we'll have all the equipment here that they need to do this, but Take a look. Here's a 360 image of where we're going. Those of you who have had kids in camp before will notice that this this pond, muskrat pond, looks pretty familiar. I'm just going to um, take us through a little tour here, a little 360 tour. This is not deep. Every year it's a little different depending on how much rainfall we get because it's a seasonal pond means sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher, but it's generally somewhere on the kids' bellies, um, maybe up to their chest if it's a smaller kid in the deepest parts. So we can see have lots of, we've got lots of lily pads out here, some grass, um, so these pretty little white flowers from, um, Oh, what are they called? Arrow, arrow root, I believe, plants. Um, this beautiful tree here. This is like a really fun part for the kids to all come in here and look for frogs on on the branches, and uh, and we come and look for stuff. <laughs> so here's a, some photos. We we go out there with strainers, and gosh, we get all kinds of cool stuff. Um, dragonfly larva. That's one of my favorites. Um, other insect larvae, uh, tadpoles, 
Sometimes we can find frogs out there. We catch fish, all just using just simple just strainers. Uh, and then we what we do is then we bring back some of what we find back here. And we probably won't do that for this, but normally we'd bring it back here and put it in a fish tank and we'll check out all our, our cool stuff we found. <laughs> Here's a couple more. He brought his own net, which I can tell you by the end of that week was not in good shape. <laughs> but he brought his own net. And yeah, just happy getting kids out immersed in nature. I figured if if we only have the chance to do one in-person event with the kids this summer, it, it has to be going to the seasonal pond. It's the best, the best. And this is something that you just don't get to do. You, you can visit state parks and do that kind of stuff, but it's pretty rare that you get the chance to do this kind of thing. <laughs> another another shot there checking out what what they found okay so that's muskrat pond go back to the flyer and let's do thursday thursday is archbold guest presenters one of the really the coolest part about our programs here at archbold not just summer camp uh, but our other education programs is the accessibility of our research staff. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Um, to not a normal camp, the kids would meet with a lot of our interns, our research interns, and play games with them, and might be going out hiking, looking for gopher tortoises together, or doing all kinds of stuff. And so we we wanted to bring some of that into the virtual camp experience. So the, the we have our our um, researchers in different teams so we have a bird team predator team predator and prey team gopher tortoise team and then another one that's going to be a bit uh, kind of like about history history of the land relationship to the land and they will these these groups of interns and staff will meet with your with your children twice during the four weeks uh, giving them activities to do at home showing them what they are up to what kind of research they do here so um that should be really cool. Here's just a picture here of some of our some of the staff here. Um, these are our role models. If you have if you have a child who loves nature or loves science, likes to collect bugs, or is learning to identify the birds um, in your neighborhood, and you wish you could have some role models for them, this is that chance. This is that opportunity for them to meet role models. Um, mostly who they're going to meet will be people early in their career, 22 years old, 23 years old, excited and passionate about, um, about science, about conservation, and uh, they're great role models for the kids. And your kids will get to be asking them questions and chatting with them um, in, in, uh, on these events. Well, let's see. I think I think that was everything. <laughs> I got to all the little spots, all the little spots on there. And uh, I'm happy to take some questions about the Ecology Club, our, our virtual summer camp. Uh, Laura, do you want to pop your video back on here? One second. I am checking for questions. OK. And um, if we don't have any in the que in there yet, I don't know if you have any <laughs> questions you can ask me or we can hop on. I mean, it's been, we've been on for a little over 20 minutes. So I wasn't expecting to stay on, you know, a long time. I just want people to have the chance to ask. We have had a few people watching on and off, but they haven't posted any questions yet. Okay. Um, any, anything that you could think of that like, uh, seemed confusing or you're like, Ooh, I wonder about this, anything like that? No, I love it. I love your, uh, <laughs> your flyer and all the information. Yeah, I, this is my first interactive flyer and I was, so, <laughs> I had so much fun putting it together. You could spend you can spend a long time playing with it because you can you can change all like 
the visuals on here. Uh, this is a, you know, I'll go back to the 360. This is something new I'm just learning how to do as an educator and as a photographer um, to make these interactive tours. So we will definitely be working with these during the summer camp. And if you have um, a, a virtual reality viewer at home, like you can buy Google Cardboard is about $10. Um, I think I paid $20 and I got a two pack for, for them. It's just literally a little cardboard thing with lenses and you stick your you stick your phone in it and you're looking at it that way. These 3D60 images, you click the little goggles at the bottom and you're, I mean, you're just moving around through, you know, looking around in these spaces and um, there's a lot of potential for, for what we can do with them. So we're going to have, I think, some scavenger hunts and some vocabulary and things like that. Um, to learn about the d different kinds of habitats.